Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about the Python interpreter. The Python interpreter is basically a little environment that we can use to execute Python commands. So it's kind of like this little sandbox environment where we can test out and try out different Python commands or different Python functions in a very safe and neutral environment. So it's kind of like a quick and dirty way to write Python and try different things out. And the way we use the Python interpreter is by opening up, opening up our command prompt. Now, if you're on Windows, there's a program called Command Prompt. If you're on Mac, there's a program called Terminal. And basically, you need to open that program in order to use the Python interpreter. So I'm here on a Mac, but if you're on a Windows, you can essentially do exactly what I'm doing just inside of the command prompt. So on Mac here, I'm just going to search for my terminal. If you're on Windows, you can just search for like CMD or command prompt and it should pop up. So the terminal is basically an environment on our computer where we can interact with the computer and do different things without a graphical user interface. So normally when we interact with the computer, we're using things like buttons or, you know, windows and, you know, we can move stuff around. We can, you know, basically just like interact with the computer with graphics, but the terminal or the command prompt is a place where we can interact with the computer using text commands. So, you know, I'm not going to get too much into it, what the terminal and the command prompt are, but that's essentially what it is. And so inside of here, we can use the Python interpreter. And the Python interpreter is basically just a little program that, like I said, we can write, you know, sort of Python in. So generally, all you have to do is go over to your terminal or your command prompt and type in Python 3. And since we're using Python 3, I'm going to type Python 3. Um, but you can also just type normal Python, and I'm pretty sure that gives you Python 2. Now, here's a quick disclaimer. Um, on Windows, you may run into a problem where you can't use this Python 3 command. And it's possible that if you're running into that problem, Python, like Python 3 hasn't been added to your Windows path variable. And basically what that means is your computer doesn't recognize the command Python 3. If that's the case, all you have to do is just go and Google how to add Python 3 to your Windows path variable. It's really easy. I'm not going to get into it in this video just because it's kind of outside the scope. But if you're running into that problem, that's probably it. It's not on your Windows path variable. So just Google around for that and you should be able to find an answer. But I'm going to type Python 3 and I'm going to click enter and it's going to open up this cool little thing down here. So you can see it basically just has like, here's the version of Python. Now I'm just going to enter so we can have some like new lines here. Um, but down here, this is the Python interpreter. So we can write Python code in here and it's going to work. So I could, for example, I could write like print and inside of here, I could print like hello world. And when I click enter, you'll see that it prints out hello world. I could create a variable. So for example, I could say like num1 is equal to 10. I could say num2 is equal to 90. And then I could print out num1 plus num2. And it's going to be able to do that for me. I could also use uh, something like a function. So I could define a function in here. We could make a function that's called say hi, and it'll take a name parameter. And you'll see here when it saw I wanted to create a function, it put these three little dots and I can indent in and we can write the code for our function. So I could say like print hello plus name. And now I have a function called say hi. So I can break out of this by just entering again and I can call the function. So I could say, say hi and we'll say hi to me. Hi, Mike. So now it's going to say, hello, Mike. So I can use a function. I could use something like an if statement, you know, I could say, uh, I could use something like a for loop. We could use while loops. I mean, we can basically use all of the basic like Python commands and, you know, inside of this Python interpreter. And like I said before, it's essentially just an environment where you can test out Python code. Now, this is not a place where you want to write like any serious Python scripts. So if you're like designing and writing a Python program, I would not recommend doing it inside of this interpreter. It is, uh, it's not a very intuitive environment. It's pretty much just set up for some quick and dirty tests. Like if you need to test something out, great. This is a perfect place for it because you don't have to set up a file. 
you don't have to use like some IDE, you don't have to execute a file, you just go in here, it's quick, it's dirty, you get it done. But if you're writing like an actual program, you definitely, definitely, definitely wanna use a text editor. The text editor, it's just gonna be way more organized, everything's gonna be a lot clearer and you're not gonna get confused with like where stuff is and what you have. So that's the basics of the Python interpreter. You know, in, in the course, I haven't really been using it at all just because I think it's a lot easier to teach when we're inside of a file than inside of here. But, you know, don't count this guy out. The Python interpreter is awesome. A lot of people use it and it's great if you just need to test, you know, little bits of code out without having to set up some huge environment. So Python interpreter, definitely awesome. I would play around with it, you know, have some fun and take advantage of it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.